Let's walk through the different injection angles, what they're used for, and their sites of administration. First, let's walk through the layers of the skin. First, we have the epidermis. This is the thin outermost layer of the skin. It provides a waterproof barrier and creates our skin tone. Then we have the dermis located beneath the epidermis. The dermis contains tough connective tissue, hair follicles, sweat glands. It's responsible for the skin's elasticity and strength. Then we have the hypodermis, commonly called the subcutaneous tissue. This layer lies below the dermis and is composed mainly of fat and connective tissue. It helps insulate the body and cushions underlying muscles and bone. Then lastly, we have the muscle layer. This is underneath the hypodermis and this layer consists of muscles which are involved in movement and maintaining posture. All right, now we're gonna talk about injecting a needle into the different layers. First, we have the intradermal route. This is given into the dermis just below the epidermis, like the name says. With the bevel up, you wanna pull the skin downward and taunt with the non-dominant thumb and forefinger and inject the needle at a 10 to 15 degree angle. Intradermal injections are commonly used for TB testing and allergy sensitivity testing, and it's given in the inner forearm. Note that it's normal for a pleb or a small blister to appear under the skin like seen here. Next, we have the subcutaneous route. This is given in the subcutaneous tissue, again, just like the name sounds. It's given at a 45 to a 90 degree angle. You give it at a 45 degree angle for underweight patients because we don't wanna accidentally go into the muscle since these patients don't have a lot of fat. And you give it at a 90 degree angle for normal to overweight patients. It's used for non-irritating water soluble medications. Examples would be insulin, heparin, and Lovenox. Typical sites for administration for subcutaneous are the abdomen, for the abdomen, you wanna be sure you are two inches away from the umbilicus when injecting into the abdomen. The subcutaneous route is actually best absorbed in the abdomen, but you can also inject it into the upper arm. You wanna do this three inches below the shoulder and three inches above the elbow on the side or back of arm. And last site of injection for sub-Q is the thigh. You want to inject it in the upper outer thigh. And for all sub-Q injections, you do not want to massage the site after injecting. Next, we have the intramuscular route. This is given into the muscle layer, just like the name says. This is given at a 90 degree angle using the Z-Track method. The Z-Track method is when you take your non-dominant hand and laterally pull back overlying skin and subcutaneous tissue one to one and a half inches and Hold. After cleaning injection site, inject the needle into the muscle and keep the needle inserted for 10 seconds to allow for even dispersion of the medication. Then you can remove the needle and release the skin. This allows medication to be trapped inside and prevent it from leaking back out. Intramuscular injections are used for irritating medications, soluble in oils and aqueous suspensions. Now let's talk about some typical sites when administering intramuscular injections. You can administer it into the ventral gluteal, which is below the hip bone. You can administer it in the deltoid, which is located at the upper arm, or the vastus lateralis, which is located on the anterior thigh. Some techniques or practices that used to be done but are no longer recommended are that the dorsal gluteal area is no longer recommended for IM injections and needle aspiration is also not recommended anymore. All right, next we have our intravenous route. This is when a catheter is inserted into a vein. It's initially given at a 25 degree angle. It's commonly used for administration of medications, fluids, and blood products. There are many, many sites where you can insert an IV, but here are some common sites seen on the arm, hand, and foot. That's all for injection angles. I made a free injection angle worksheet to test your knowledge on all that we just reviewed and more. You can find the free worksheet on my shop, Nurse in the Making. Of course, the link is in the description below. Happy studying, future nurses. You got this.